All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. This is our virtual setting. We are currently in hybrid mode where we're in person and virtual. So we just thank God for all of you that are attending today. I want you to take this time right now to go ahead and share this with as many people. Share on your social media platforms. Let them know that we are on right now. It's on and popping. We are going to deal with some things today, and I think it's going to be very beneficial to you. So for those who are out there, go ahead, click your likes, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the notifications button to go ahead and have all the content that we're uploading. Um, we're coming with more stuff this year, and we're excited about it. So we want you to go ahead and do that real quick. And um, go ahead, grab your coffee, grab your juice. Um, get, go ahead, get that biscuit out the oven right now real quick. I know y'all getting set and getting ready for the word of God. <clears throat> For all of our first timers, we want to welcome you. For those that this is your first time um, listening in and tuning in, we want to welcome you all. We want to let we want to know where you're logging in from. Listen, invite somebody. For those that are out there, those that are members of this ministry, invite somebody to church today. Let them know in the comfort of their own home they can receive the word of God today. So we want you to do that today. And so those that maybe are tuning in, we want to welcome you. We love and appreciate you. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say thank you for tuning in today. There are many other platforms that you can be on, but you tune in with us today. So don't change that channel. Don't go to another place right now. Stay right here because God has something for you. We're going to pray real quick, and I'm going to begin today's message. And I want you to go ahead and get your pens and your pads, get your devices ready. I want you to capture what God has for you today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Um, to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We thank you for this revelation that will flow like water today. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom that rests upon me to speak forth your Word, to speak forth answers and divine mysteries and secrets and things that your people need to hear for their individual lives so that it can be applied in a practical and effective manner, that it will produce results. We cover the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration today. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it now. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And Holy Spirit, you are here. You are the miracle worker. You are the one here abiding amongst, amongst us, but also living on the inside of us to do great and mighty things for the kingdom of God. Explode greatly in this place today. Let each and every person feel and sense your tangible presence along with the impartation of the spirit of faith the spirit of seeing and knowing and understanding and comprehension that answers are being given, questions that they've had that you're answering those things today. We give you the glory, praise, and honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, y'all. Today I'm going to kick off something new. I'm going to kick off dealing with, we're still within the parameters of the kingdom of God. We're still within the parameters of this kingdom system and understanding the keys of the kingdom of God. The Bible declares in, in Matthew 6, it starts in 25. It talks about don't be concerned about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, where you're going to live. He says, for these things do the Gentiles seek. But he says this, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his way of doing, how he does and operates, and the righteousness of God, and his righteousness, his way of being right. So now we understand that we got to understand process and principle but understand identity and purpose as well to now achieve and accomplish those things. All the other stuff is going to be a byproduct of you walking in the keys of the kingdom and now understanding who you are as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ and walking in that authority, but also walking in the principles. So today I'm going to entitle this. And the, the first thing that came to my mind, I'm dealing in the area of stewardship. How do we handle stewardship? But what I call it is principle and power, understanding stewardship, principle and power, understanding the principles that we need to walk out on a regular basis, but also it producing the power that we're believing God for, the super on the natural. And so we're understanding the natural things that we have to do 
But even though it seems like they're natural things, it's actually a supernatural principle because it's based out of the spirit. It's based out of the word of God. So if we begin to function systematically in the principles of God, then we'll begin to see the power of God manifesting in our lives. And so one of the things I want to share here is in walking in my principles, God says, and walking in power will bring you out and into. Let me read this again, because this is what I begin to type. Um, the other morning I got up and I was just spending some time with God and I just began to type. I pulled out my pad and just began to type out, um, pick up my phone and just start typing in my notes what I was hearing while I was just in meditation and prayer time. And so he says, walking in my principles. No, let me stop here. Let me stop here. Let me stop here. I got to share this. I feel like I got to share this. Um, that morning or that night I was asleep and I was um, awake. I was awakened. It may have been three, four o'clock in the morning sometime. I don't remember exactly which time it was. And I was having some trouble sleeping. But so much, the reason why I was having so much trouble sleeping was because so much was racing through my mind, even while I was sleeping. It was, it was the craziest feeling. It almost began to feel like anxiety tried to hit me because so much was rushing through me. And all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, hold on, settle down, settle your mind down. I was like, what, what is this? And I knew what it was. And I got up. I was like, and I knew what to do. I got up. It was like, uh, get up and go into the room, the other room, and begin to pray and begin to, to, to spend some time with me. That's why we're just hearing it on the inside. And so as I began to sit, it was like the Spirit of God was teaching me some things, not just for me, but for others as well, that it was almost like, he says, now begin to compartmentalize certain things. Begin to now say, okay, put this here, put this there, do this, do that. And he began to share with me about this area of stewardship and begin to talk about you're going to begin to walk. And there are principles and things that you know to do. But what, one of the things, the anxiety was coming. I didn't even know that till now. That's good. The anxiety was coming through, watch this, impatience. Wanting to do it all now, wanting to have it all now. And God saying, okay, because when you begin to see things that God wants you to have, there can be a tendency to just want it now. We want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. And God is saying, I need you to pump the brakes for a minute, structure and organize yourself, organize your thinking. We like to call it brain dumps. Get it out, organize it, put it before you, and begin to say, okay, step by step, move by move, principle by principle practicing these principles on a consistent basis will produce power that'll bring you out into. He says, you know what to do. He says, now begin to systematically do those things and begin to structure those things. This is the area of system, strategy, and structure. He says, I want you to begin to do this. He says, I want you to start teaching on this. And I want you to help others who are trying to accomplish something. And it's in them. It's big in them. He says, but now it's so much that's been racing through their minds because it's work, it's children, it's situations, the job, family, something else happened, relationships, things that they want to accomplish and achieve. He says, you're going to accomplish and achieve this stuff, but I need you to begin to now systematically structure yourself. Now, I want to show you, I'm going to read to you what I begin to write out. He says, walking in my principles and power will bring you out into your wealthy place. He says, it'll bring you out into your wealthy, healed, delivered, peaceful, joyful, and whole place. So when you begin to walk in the principles, it's going to produce the power, the laws of the kingdom, how he does things, what he says to do when stuff happens, how he says to handle thoughts when they come to your mind by casting them down and bringing them under subjection to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. So the knowledge that you have will cause you to identify things that are trying to elevate themselves above God's knowledge because you know the knowledge of Christ. And then any other knowledge that comes, you begin to realize, wait a minute, this is going against the principles of the kingdom. So I'm going to 
ca capture that thought, bring it under subjection. And even though my flesh may want to do this thing because I understand the principle of the kingdom, I'm going to submit my will to the principles of the kingdom of God and do what God says to do, how he says to do it. And power is going to show up and all these things shall be added as long as I stick with the program. Amen. Now, this is going to be good here. Now, stewardship, I, I put stewardship slash management is the key to your increase in every area of your life. Stewardship and management. Stewardship and management. This is why what's in your hands isn't the issue. But the issue is what's in your head, which will bring out what's in your heart the desires of your heart. So he's saying it, the, the real issue is your mentality because no matter what stage you're in, if you have the wrong mentality, you will squander what's already in your hands. So he's saying it, some of you are asking for more. He says, you don't need more. You just need to think better and think right about what you have and what you do with what you have will produce more. Even in times, and this is what he began, and I'm gonna have to be kind of transparent in this message, but I think it's gonna help you because he was dealing with me about me. And so I'm, not, I'm like one of them guys, I like to use my life as an example to be a living epistle. He says this, he says, when you change your mindset or your thinking and enforce discipline to do it, it will now shape and change your character in any area. Let me read that again. When you change your mindset, when you change how you think about a thing and enforce discipline to do it, it will now shape and change your character in any area. Your flesh or old nature may want to do um, something, but discipline will enforce it or make it do what you know is right to do. It's, this is going to be, and it's almost like sometimes people are waiting for the grand event, the big supernatural thing to happen. We shout for debt cancellation, but he says the discipline in you following my principles is going to be guaranteed success every time you do it. If you just stick with it and do it the way that I say and begin to bring down your flesh and calm your mind to even want to have it instantaneously. It'll produce discipline, which will now force your flesh to come under subjection or a mindset that opposes the will of God, the old way of thinking, the old way of doing. Now, this going now, and I'm, I'm just reading this before I even get to the scriptures real quick. Because now the battle with your mind is that you have been introduced to a way of thinking. Uh, now I, I typed, I kind of typed it wrong, but let me make sure I read it correctly. It's a battle with your mind that you've been introduced to a way of thinking from sources in your life and based on your trust level of that source will determine if you keep doing it. Let, let me, let me, let me, and, and, and it depends on what was first introduced to you and the level of trust in the individual or the source that you receive the information from. And sometimes what can happen is you can receive wrong information, but you received it from a trusted source. So now even when the right information begins to come, you're fighting with what you cur had currently believed or received about that thing. And now that's the battlefield of the mind or the warfare in your thinking that's going on because God is trying to introduce truth. He's trying to get you to that place. But now the struggle is how you already think and feel about it. Um, <laughs> this is such a good ex explanation. I didn't want to bring it out, but <laughs> it's so good. So my baby, please forgive me. And I think my wife already know where I'm getting ready to go with this. And I typed this out. My, my baby girl, one of my babies, Alicia, she just had her baby the other day. And the lactation nurse was teaching her about breastfeeding. Now, the funny thing was other nurses at the hospital had already told Alicia one thing about it. But the lactation nurse told her something different. 
But now the funny thing, my wife was there in the whole encounter, but she said that now Alicia was, was kind of battling with the new information that actually the qualified person was telling her. And the qualified person told her, forget what they say, because they're not lactation nurses. I am. I know what I'm talking about. So she instantly went through that. And she said she even saw the mannerism. It was like that instant, almost guardedness. Uh, wait a minute. Well, the other nurses said this. And so because she instantly trusted the first source that told her something, she battled with the truth that came secondary. And God is saying, when he showed me, I said, Lord Jesus, I said, ain't that the truth? And so she had to fight through the information that she first heard to receive the truth. And so that's what so many people are going through. And he says this, he says, watch this, and man, this, this is, and he says, and she received, now let me read it how I wrote it. But she had to fight through the first information that, re that she received in order to receive the new information from the more trained and experienced source. And God is saying, our God has called us to be stewards and managers of the resources that he's given us that we have at our disposal. And you, when you realize that God, God is the true source, he is the, his word is preeminent. His kingdom is preeminent. Remember, we talked about the word, talked about the word wrapped in flesh. And he's the first, the firstborn of many brothers. He's the first place, the preeminent in all things. And out of him were all things created. So if out of the word was everything created, you got to go to the source of what all creation to get how all creation works. And then we constantly go to him to say, wait a minute, don't go by your feeling. Go by what I'm saying. Because what you're feeling can completely contradict what I'm saying. So in your head, you tripping, but in your heart, you got peace. Because in your heart is your spirit man, the real you, and it's connected to God. But your, watch this, your mind, your soul is now being reprogrammed to now line up to what's in your spirit. That's why you can be head tripping at heart, you at peace. And you know this is the way to go, but your head been fighting you the whole way because now you tripping and God says, if you want to be my steward and my manager, I'm going to have to trust you. And in order for me to trust you, you're going to have to go through some examinations and you're going to have to pass some tests to now be faithful over the little so that you can be ruler over much. Don't worry about ruling much. Focus on faithfulness in what you currently have. He was ministering to me. Don't, don't worry about what you're trying to get. Who is already around you? Make them the best at who, who they are. Listen, I don't care if you got five people, five dollars, ten people, twenty dollars, whatever it is. You maximize what you have. Use my principles with what you currently have and watch me accelerate and increase. And he says this, when this happens, you're going to experience a quantum leap in your faith. See, this is when you begin. He says, I need for you to become disciplined first so I know I can trust you at the next level. You are telling me you will do this for me when you get there, but you ain't doing it here. Who, Lord. See, he was cutting me. He was molding me. He was ministering. It's stuff I already knew, but he had to remind me, calm yourself down. Yes, you might even get excited and you get energized and ready to go. But he says, you cannot violate my principles. Because that's what we try to do. We try to get God to override what he already said. Ooh, gee, man, you better hear me. That hit me. Listen, <laughs> we'll try to convince God to do something different than what he already established. Versus us submitting, because what we're trying to do is get God to submit to us versus us submitting to him. Let's just find out what he said about it. Let's do what he said about it. If his word says forgive, we forgive. If his word says this is how you handle an altercation or a conflict, this is how you handle it. If his word says this is what you do, you praise me in advance before you see it because now praise is the attitude of faith and we understand that you praise him and you believe you receive it before you see it. So that means my attitude needs to be like I already got it before I got it. 
So I got to have the right mindset and keep my mind stayed on him. And he says, I'll keep you in perfect peace. I'll keep you in wholeness. I'll keep you in shalom. I'll keep you rooted and grounded because soon as you make a decision to follow me in faith, your head will start tripping and fear will rise up to try to grip you and say, what in the world did I just do? Oh my God, what did I just do? And he had to do that with us. And he was working with me with that. He said, don't, don't, don't you start tripping. You started this thing in faith. You got to stay in faith now. And I got up and I got, oh Lord, I'm telling you, this is your turnaround season. We told you. Listen, my wife even reminded me of what my daughter said. Um, Alexis, it was like at the end of March, it's going to be a new season. She might not even remember. Then I remembered the Holy Ghost reminded me, you said the exact same thing in the service, that after this first quarter, something else was about to shift. I said, Lord, I completely forgot about that. There is a shift that's already happened where you about to break out of your cocoon, just like my grandbaby was born into this earth realm. Your baby about to be born now. Whatever's been in you is about to be birthed out of you. Some of y'all feel that thing. You feel a quickening in your spirit right now. And God is already sending you midwives in your life to help push that baby out of you. And he's saying everything you need. And remember this, everything that that baby needs is in the breast of that mother, the nourishment. This is why God calls himself El Shaddai, the many breasted one. That means all nourishment, all sufficiency, everything we need is in him. And watch this. He abides on the inside of us. So everything we need is already in us. Glory be to God. Y'all better shout right now. Whoo, Jesus. Man. Whoo, Jesus. Man. He says this. He says, when God has called us to be stewards and managers of the resources that he has given us or he gives us and that we have at our disposal, man, listen, When you realize that God blessed you, male and female, blessed he them. He created he them, male and female. Watch this, and he blessed them. And he says this, go be fruitful. The blessing has come to be fruitful. The blessing is there to be fruitful. The blessing is there to be fruitful. I have the blessing to be fruitful. I have the blessing to multiply. I have the blessing to replenish. I have the blessing to subdue. I have the blessing to have dominion and dominate. What? Watch this. When you have that mentality, this ain't in my notes, but I feel it in my spirit. When you realize that you got the blessing and you are blessed to grow. You are blessed to grow things. You get excited when you see seed form. Because you know what's in me is designed to multiply what's being pre presented and provided. So whatever I have, I have the authority to multiply it. I have the power to increase it. And so I take this mentality and I'm not ashamed or intimidated by new situations and new environments. So no matter what environment I'm in, I carry the blessing. I carry the Garden of Eden. I carry the Zoe life, the nature of God in me. And everywhere I go, I'm caused to grow. Everywhere I go, I'm anointed to grow. Where God provides, he provides. Where he has authorized you, where he is telling you to invade, he is also commanding you to produce. Man, I got, man, this, this thing here, Lord Jesus. He says, watch this. He says, when you understand that you've been blessed to, to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion, you will take what you currently have and grow it. This, this, jumped off, this jumped off at me. He said, it was like, I knew I had to put the word it in all caps and quotation marks. He says, you take what you have and grow it. You're trying to get that, but that comes out of it. <laughs> Cultivate it and it'll turn into that. See, my grandbaby didn't start off as a baby. 
She started out as egg and sperm connecting. Then God's job was to breathe the breath of life and spirit in her. Because the spirit doesn't come from man, the spirit comes from God. But the initial seed comes from male and female to come together. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you. You bring it together and God going to breathe on it. All you do is bring the sperm and the egg together, but God will breathe on it. And you can't be God and breathe on it, but you can do your part to develop the sperm and the egg and bring it together to connect. He says this. I'm going to watch this. That means partnership. Man, you better hear me. Listen, because a sperm can't grow on its own and the egg can't grow without the sperm. But the two need one another to meet. And it's God's job to breathe life into that thing. And so when God starts connecting you with people and divine connections, he's going <clears> to <throat> breathe on it. And now you're going to see things come up and out of new. In, listen, new. Oh, calm down. Lord, I got to come. This thing racing through me. New. No, this thing, this song been running through my mind. It's like everything new, 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 new experiences, new doors opening, new homes, new cars. I know, but watch this, new ideas, new ways of thinking, new body parts, everything new. Glory to God. It's time to amp glory, glory, amp up your faith. New body parts. You coming off the medication. And if you need a new kidney, it's coming now in Jesus' name. I mean limbs, the maimed healed in Jesus' name. I don't care. Body parts that have been chopped off will grow back again. Glory to God. Listen, woman by the name of, was it, Maria Woodworth? At her, um, her, I think it was her grandchild. Had gone into this meeting. It was this guy in this meeting had gotten his finger cut off, and they tried to sew it back on. He went to this woman's meeting. In the middle of the meeting, the power of God hit him. The old finger flew off of his hand and hit somebody. Watch this. A new finger completely grew out. But when the old finger hit some, uh, in a guy in a wheel or a lady in a wheelchair, I think, a guy or a lady in a wheelchair, the power was on the, ampute the detached finger that when it hit the person in the wheelchair, they got up and started walking. Do you understand the power? And God wants us to tap into that level of power. We have dumbed down too long. And the world and this culture has suppressed the body of Christ. And I sense it in my spirit. Who, God, that he wants to bring this power out at such a level that signs, wonders, and miracles are normal amongst us. Man, you, man. I got to get this out to the world. I, every time I feel this, I feel like I feel I feel like my spirit breaking loose. I feel like busting loose. I feel I feel it. I feel like, man, if I can explain it, it feel like the walls around me about to tumble down because the power when you begin to tap into that power and the true nature that abides in you, everything around you got to change. Who? I got to go to nations. My God in heaven, this thing is heavy on me. I'm telling you, this thing, this man, whoo, y'all forgive me. Lord Jesus, whoo, glory to God. I know y'all pulling, <laughs> y'all receiving this thing. I can feel it. That's why people going to look at you strange because you thinking different. Why? Because you eating from another level now. You think it completely different than you used to. God is amping you up. He's pushing you to another place. He's exposing you to greater. He's exposing your mind to greater. And he says you got to stretch and come out of your cocoon, come out of your timidity, come out of your fear, come out of your ignorance and bathe and swim in the spirit. Oh, Jesus. Okay, okay, man. My God, I command debt freedom. I command debt freedom, that debt got to fall off you, that everywhere you go, it got to fall off you in Jesus' name. 
derrière le brosse canne, le robe acheté de debris. Just receive it. No, -uh. see what happened there. Even as I spoke that in my mind, I'm trying to figure out. My mind instantly started trying to figure out something. How it's gonna do it? And God said, "Shut your mind down and just speak from my spirit. Just speak from it and let your mind catch up to what the spirit is already saying. You about to catch up to where God has already placed you. You are already elevated. You are already seated in high places. You are already over the enemy." He is already under your feet. And now once you realize who you are, you will speak from a place of dominion. You will speak from a place of power. You will believe from a greater place. And nothing is impossible for us. Just like Jesus will tell people, tell so-and-so, give me that donkey over there. I have need of it. You better hear what I'm getting ready to tell you. You about to command resources to come to you now. And there's going to be great favor on you. To say, I have need of this. And people will just begin to give. And you think you had to build it. God said, you ain't got to build it. You can command use of somebody else's. It's already built. As long as you get done what I told you to get done. And now watch this. Not only do you have uses of the resources, but you don't have the responsibility of oversight and overhead. And God said, you still getting done what I called you to do. And still stacking up paper. And still doing what you got to do. And God has said, man, Lord, I'm about to take off here in a minute. God says, I'm going to show you something different in this season, baby. You about to see new things. You about to be exposed to new in Jesus name. Glory to God. Man, this thing, man, I, Lord Jesus. Lord, I wish I was in person with y'all. <laughs> man, I feel the glory of God. Whoo. Whoo, Jesus. It's like I'm seeing some of y'all shouting. I want to start calling out your names. It's like, I see it. I see it. This thing hitting your spirit. This is going to be such great organizational time that you're going to enjoy the organization time that you're going through. Because during this organizational time is going to be the removal of things. You're going to throw away what you don't need and only keep what you do need. And you will realize you, you're about to do more with less. Phew. Man... Man, man, <laughs> whoo, my God, I feel I'm about to pass out here in a second. I'm like, Lord Jesus, this thing, man, I'm telling you, my God in heaven, you about to expand. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, whoo, glory, whoo, ah, now watch this, man, I got to keep, man, Lord Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now watch this. When we talk about you growing it, don't complain about what you don't have, but begin to be grateful and thankful for what you do have. And bless it. Utilize it. Example, two fish, five loaves. Even the disciple says, Jesus, what is this amongst so many? He says, give it to me. He knew who he was. He knew he had the power to bless what was in his hands. He blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples. Watch this. But before he did it, he organized the people and set them in sections of 50s and 100. And then used his team. Watch this. It was his responsibility as the leader, as the head, to bless. He says, what do we have? That was the question. What do we have? I see what's ahead, but what do we have? He said, all we got, and it seems so insignificant what they had in comparison to what they needed. He said, all we, this, all we got is a little boy here. Number one, it came from an unexpected source. A little boy who just happened to be there with his two-piece fish dinner. And that's all he had. And the Bible says there was 5,000, not including women and children. You better hear me. Two fish, five loaves. I'm about to bring my Baptist voice out in a second. I'm telling you. And he says, give it to me. He gave thanks. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus. He gave thanks for what he had. He didn't complain. He didn't say, that's all we got? Y'all can't find nothing else? Y'all can't do nothing else? Come on now. We got to do better than this. We got to do. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Hold oh, Lord. You, he says this. Bring me that. Thank you. 
Thank you for what we do have. Thank you. Thank you for what's currently in my hands. Now I bless what I've just been thankful for. I speak over this thing and I speak increase over what I have. And he broke it and gave it to them and a miracle took place. Get ready, spirit of fire. Miracles with what we currently have for what we have to do. The blessing is going to come on you to get it done. You better hear me. That means from the mindset to the resources, whatever is needed, even if you ain't been trained in the area, God is about to infuse you and download the spirit of wisdom and bring it out of you. And your mind is about to be accelerated. If you will receive this of me, says the Lord, and you submit to my spirit and submit to this authority, he says, I'll cause you to do things that will blow your mind. I'll cause you to come up with resources, with formulas, ideas, and concepts that will blow your mind. Man, I'm about, man, I got, y'all help me here. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Who? Glory to God. Glory to God. This is why he says, you need to expand your capacity to handle with what I'm pouring out. This is why it's important. And God dealt with me. I'm telling you, intercessors, get ready. We about to meet. Go ahead, leaders, people who want to serve. We getting ready to meet. We getting ready to train, to handle what we have and to multiply what we have, but also to expand our capacity to receive greater. Watch this. You need to submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. But when you submit to God, that spirit of wisdom, the grace of wisdom will come upon you to give you ideas to oversee areas and to help multiply. You are all anointed to multiply in your perspective areas. You better receive this in Jesus name. You are anointed to multiply. The Bible says if you're, I ain't even got to the scripture yet. If you're faithful in that, which is another man, I'll give you your own. Oh, he says, if you're not faithful, who will give you your own? Sometimes God connected you with an anointed man and woman of God and with a vision to get things done. He says this, I want you to use what's in you because before you launch out, you got to build within. Man, that's good. You got to build within so that now you have the platform to launch from and that now your connection will be solid and tight because in those, in those formative years, those years of you, when you being obscure, that nobody knew your name that God was molding you the whole time. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, y'all better hear this. Y'all better hear this. <laughs> God is building a platform and building a launching pad for many that when you, they come and connect and are raised up, that when they're released, when we bring them in, raise them up and send them out, whether it's sent out by being within the organization to do that thing or to go outside of the organization to do the thing God called them to do. Whatever you are released to do, the grace is going to be there and it's going to be sufficient. Well, you will have more than enough requiring no aid or support, but you will be furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. That means this. God is watch this. You got to recognize and I'm, I'm getting ahead of my notes here. But God is saying you got to recognize me as your source. When you recognize me as your source, you will stop looking at the resource as your source and recognize it as a resource that comes from the source. So when you recognize the job as the resource that came from the source, even if you lost the resource, but you still connected to the source, he'll give you something greater than what you lost. Come on now, man, shoot. I don't know about you. I'm preaching myself happy right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> man, 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 man. See, you can lose stuff from having a bad mindset, which will cause you to have bad stewardship and bad management. See, 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 I remember growing up in ministry. I, I knew how to preach. I was taught the word, how to study the word and how to get a message together. But one thing I said, I never was fully taught how to lead. And I realized that later on. So I had to realize, wait a minute, let me develop myself as a leader. Because if you don't develop yourself as a true leader, you'll begin to mismanage what God brings across your table. 
And then if you don't watch it, you'll begin to lose things, people and resources, because number one, you don't recognize yourself as a leader and you don't recognize your deficiency. And if you recognize your deficiencies and your limitations, then you realize you'll begin to accessorize around you. Not yes, people, but people who accentuate, who, ex who accessorize your limitations as your team to help move you forward. This is why every person needs a good team. And your team could be your financial advisor. Your good team can be your trainer to help your body. Your good team can be your counselor to help you with your soul. Your good team can be your pastors to help you with your spirit, soul, and body. Your good see, I'm, you hear what I'm saying? Develop your team. Man, you better get ready. You better, see, see, <laughs> you better hear everything that's being said. You better hear. That means that's the, watch this, that's the works aspect of your faith beginning to set up the meetings, beginning to now develop yourself as a steward so God can trust you now. If God was to dump, watch this, watch this, and watch this, and this is the question. God said, if I brought you a thousand people right now, where would you put them? You might believe for one thing, but are you preparing for it? Prepare, prepare. If you're a good steward with where you currently are, God can trust you with more. Come on. Come on, um, I want to, um, let, let's, let's do this, man. Huh. I, I know y'all typing, I know y'all commenting. I can't see it, but I know y'all are. <laughs> I know Lord Jesus, now watch this. I want, I want to share something here, here with you. In other words, right here, your mindset, if it doesn't change, will cause you to lose what you have. And because of a bad mindset and lack of consistency, which is born out of a lack of discipline and development, you will lose stuff. But God says, I want you to develop consistency and discipline, which will help your development. Consistency, whether it's in getting up early, Consistency in doing the sit-ups, consistency in saving the money, consistency in sowing the seed, consistency, develop consistency. Develop the structure, which will help your consistency. It was a um, man by the name of David Bach. I don't always do this, but um, he has this book, The Automatic Millionaire. He talks about the latte factor. He talks about, you know, even if you know the money that you spend on coffee every day, if you put that away in something. You know, it'll accrue interest, an interest-bearing account. It can accrue interest. You can make so much money. You know, you do the numbers depending on the, we understand the market and all that kind of stuff. But it can be the same way in the spirit. We understand one of the best investments you can make is in the kingdom of God. And as you consistently sow and support, watch this. God says, because you're supporting my house, I'm obligated to support your house. And you got to understand, see, now with this stewardship and consistency, even in your giving, and he says this, if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. So he says, you determine your growth and increase by what you release. So if you sow sparingly, two words, amount and frequency. Sometimes you can give a frequency, but it's a low amount in comparison to what you have. Now you'll get a return, but it won't be to the level of somebody that's given a greater amount based off of relative to what they have. Okay, this, let me give you an example. The woman who sold the two mice, Jesus says she gave more than everybody because everybody else gave out of their abundance, but this lady gave out of her want and gave everything she had. So even though it was only like two pennies worth or some change and others could have been given thousands, in comparison to what they have, the thousands was nothing. See, see that's why too, work with what you have. He sees what you have and he sees your heart. And if you're willing to submit what you already have, he'll trust you and give you more. The way that you're about to increase is to release what you have. And to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you with my money. I'm going to trust you with my life. I'm going to trust you with my time, my talent, and my treasure. Everything that I am and have is yours now. Watch this. It's yours, but I'm the steward or manager of it. And so as the steward or manager, your job, our job is to get from headquarters what he wants us to do with it and obey. And now he'll come back and say, OK, well done, 
thou good and faithful servant. You did with your life what I told you to do. I told you to go teach my people who they are. I told you to go ahead and feed the homeless. I told you to go ahead and speak to that sister that was over there that now you were struggling in fear. But God was saying this was your opportunity of stewardship, advancement and development, not realizing you were overcoming the fear of even now opening up your mouth to preach the gospel to somebody. And now out of that, now you overcame fear. You overcame shame because you were ashamed and you got to learn not to be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to boldly declare, even in a world that rejects me, that now you got to show yourself bold and strong and begin to step out on faith and do something out of your comfort zone. This is part of the stewardship. It's not my life, it's yours. My body is the temple of the living God. He says, I'll dwell in you. I'll abide in you. I'll be your God. You shall be my people. And so that means you can't do anything with your body that you want to. This is why it's such a treacherous thing to now sleep with people outside of God's hand. Watch this, outside of the covenant of marriage. He says this, if you connect yourself with a harlot, or let me put it, I, I, you know what I'm about to say. You become one with that individual. This is a powerful thing because sex was only designed to be in the confines of marriage because there's a connection that's made. And now you connecting yourself with somebody that's not made a commitment. You better, man, you better. This is serious. Now God loves you and how we manage and steward ourselves. Same way, even with how we eat, how we take care of our body. We only got one. Because our body carries our spirit and our soul. And if our body is torn down, we can't get to do what God is calling us to do because we riddle with disease, pain and shame, whatever it is. I'm telling you, God is saying, I need you to get everything in order this year. I'm talking about everything. I told you those six areas, your spiritual life. Number one, you born again. OK, you feel with the Holy Spirit. All right. But now you, you develop yourself. You feed off of the word. Watch this, obeying my kingdom, the keys of my kingdom, the way that my kingdom works. That's your spiritual development. How I say treat people, how I say walk in love, how I say handle your money, how I say handle relationships, how I say handling forgiveness, how I say handling this, that, or the other, how I say handling your business. He says, I want you to submit everything to me and just start working on it little by little. Little consistencies bring big results. Just start five minutes a day in prayer and meditation, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Spend time building yourself up on your most holy faith. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Having a time of mindfulness where you just sit and cast care on God and say, God, I'm not going to worry about this because your word declares this. So that's developing your spirit, but also your soul. And then you cast down those images of not enough. When you start speaking, God is the God of more than enough. All my sufficiency is in you. I can produce what I need to produce to take care of everything I need to and want. I get up 15 minutes of exercise. And now I knock out my confessions of faith while I'm exercising. I'm on the treadmill speaking my daily faith confessions. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I set up my paycheck where a part of my money goes here. A part goes there. I honor God with the first. Then I bring this to him. And then I set this aside. And then I begin to feed myself and spend, watch this, put it in a safe interest bearing account. And then I begin to do this. And now I put this in the savings account. And then when God has need and he says this, will you help me with this project? You already got it in store. And say, now I can pull the hundred dollars to solder this project. I can pull the 500 to solder this project. Why? Because I've disciplined myself over a period of time to secure this bag to now be ready. And I got my seed on standby. Man, glory to, I'm telling you, I knew the wisdom was going to flow. He's giving you answers now. Set up an account for your giving. Set up an account for your daily bills. Set up this, do this, and now everything and begin to allocate, begin to structure, tell your money where it's going. Steward. I'm telling this, nobody, I won't eat this today. I know I've been eating this all of this time. Now I got to break this cycle. 
because I know this sugar is affecting my joints and it's bringing inflammation in my body. And it's hard for me to glorify God. I can't even get on my knees to pray because my knees hurt so much because I've been destroying my body over these years by how I've been treating it. And God says, I want to reverse those effects in your body. The super can come on your natural. That yes, you might have damaged an organ, but I can repair it. But I need your involvement. I need your faith. But watch this, your faith plus your works. Because faith without works is dead. So yes, I'm speaking over my kidney, but now I start drinking a gallon of water a day. So this is a steward over my body. I spend time with my wife. We go out to dinner. We spend time, spend time with your husband and wife. Now look to meet their needs, steward. You are called to oversee them. They are called to oversee you. If you see a deficiency there, you are anointed to provide. You better hear me. I'm anointed for my wife and she'll anoint it for me. See, this will eliminate the enemy from getting in. Amen. See, when you do that, intentionality, discipline. We're going to spend this time together. We're going to talk about this. We're going to enforce communication. I don't care if my flesh rise up and I start getting agitated and irritated. My spirit man, watch this, which should be stronger, will calm my flesh down and say, no, talk through this thing. Come on, I'm helping you now. Because see, this is now your development of your soul, but also of your relationship. So now you're getting control of your anger, but also rebuilding relationships. And now all of a sudden, spending time intentionally, now watch this, helps your relationship. So now you've done this. You now developed your spirit. You developed your soul. You develop in your body. You develop in your finances. You develop in your relationships. But then God says this, I want all of you, I want you to do what I told you and created you to do which is to serve me and to serve this generation with the gifts, talents, and abilities that I put in you. Do it as unto the Lord. And he says, even if you don't know what to do, what you were created and called to do, set your hands to doing something that's attached and associated to my kingdom and the advancement of my kingdom, and I'll lead and guide you to that ultimate place. Even if you started out with the children and then went to ushering and then all of a sudden you're on the street team and now you're doing this. And now God said, I feel, I feel like I'm supposed to do business and I want to be around business people. And now I say, OK, marketplace. So you start learning business and you start learning principles from the word of God, how to conduct business. Now you set up meetings and strategizing and meeting with great business minds and learning things and going out into the area that you're called to and begin to be an expert in the area that you're called to. Because now you already feel an inclination to go into that area. When you feel an inclination to go into that area, begin to learn everything you can about that area. So now you're developing a purpose. So in this, watch this, in 10 minutes, I just told you how to develop every area of your life consistently over the rest of this year. <laughs> so if an I was you, I go back and listen to this, whether you captured that at first, and go back and get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. I already did a thing when I taught you how to do the eight steps to success that the Holy Ghost gave me well in 2005, 2004, maybe. He said, do these things. And when I looked at all of them put together, I said, of course. It was like common sense. But he talked about working on my spirit by praying in the Holy Ghost every day. Working on my mind by renewing my mind to the word pertaining to scriptures that pertain to what it is I'm believing for. Learning how to develop confessions concerning those things. Start speaking life, knowing that I shall decree a thing in this established, and the light of his favor shall shine upon my ways. That God is a creative being. I've created in his image and likeness, and he created by speaking. So as a steward, I can create by speaking. I speak multi-million dollar ideas. I speak billion dollar streams of income around me. I declare this. I declare that. I have one million dollars monthly income. Whatever you got to speak. You declare it and watch this. And Father, I thank you for the revealing of the structures or the entities that I need to put in place to produce what I'm speaking. 
And when I speak, everything got to come together to give me witty inventions, ideas, and concepts. But now it'll take discipline and consistency and my faith to now implement what it is God has already revealed. He has already revealed to you what it needs to be done to many of you. It's just the consistency, the discipline, the tenacity, the discipline, the diligence, and determination, the D3 lifestyle to accomplish and to achieve what God said I called you to do. And watch this. And this time around, you're going to grow stronger. You're going to grow wiser. You're going to be strengthened through productivity. Because discipline carries you when motivation leaves you. I think I'm going to finish with this. I think he didn't want me to lay this groundwork today. Lord Jesus. I'm about spent now. It's like, oh. The discipline is making yourself do the principle until you see the power produce the fruit or the manifestation. All of this is summed up in this statement. Everything I just preached, the discipline is making yourself do the principle until you see the power produce the fruit or the manifestation. When you walk in the principle, it's a law. A law is an established principle that works for anybody that gets involved. Watch this. When I walk in the law of gravity, I don't have to conjure up. I don't have to make myself really walk in the law of gravity. It's automatic because it's already running. If I, that's what's keeping me on the ground now. If I was to step off of this building, watch this. Instantly, I'll be a participant in the law of gravity because it's already in motion. The law of sowing and reaping is already in motion. The law of corresponding action is already in motion. The law of healing is already in motion. If I just step on in it, it automatically happens. As I give, it's given unto me again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The law of confession, whatever I speak out of my heart, which is in abundance, is going to come to pass. So I prepare work. For what I spoke, faith. <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. And I'm gonna finish there. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna stop here. It's it's so much. It's so much. <laughs> it's so much. I feel like I, I deposited what I needed to today. Man, y'all pulling. My goodness. Oh, Jesus. Whew. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. Oh, we give you glory. Seal this word in their hearts today and in their minds. Holy Spirit, I ask that you bring these things back up to motivate, to encourage. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen. Amen. And so be it. We'll talk more about the principles and, and really dig into them. But I want you to first thing is first. If you're somebody under the sound of my voice that's never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I just want you to make him Lord today. Listen, it's good to walk in the principles. It's good to see the power. But if you don't have the source, it means nothing. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come to the Father but through him. He said, but through me. That's what he said. He says, you can't get to the Father but by me. He is the only door. I know what the world may say. There are many ways to God. No, it ain't. There's only one way to the Father. Jesus said it himself. It's through him. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Confess him as your Savior. Make him Lord. I want you to just do this. Repeat this simple prayer after me if that's you. Say this, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say this, say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. 
I'm born again. I have eternal life. Now say, Holy Spirit, I receive you now. Come inside me now. Dwell in my spirit. Strengthen me. Enable me. Supply me with everything that I need that pertains to life and godliness. I yield myself to you. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now just begin. Come on, let's begin to worship God. Lift up your hands, say la la baroso, open up your mouth, begin to add voice, begin to speak the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's there, he's going to assist you with a heavenly language. Le roba she caramando soco, reba se le lebo soco, la nando co raba se te robo soto. Glory to God. Now, glory to God. Just begin to pray, begin to worship God, begin to thank Him. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Now, watch this, watch this. You're born again. You have eternal life. Don't ever question that. If somebody was to come and ask you, how do you know that you're born again? I don't want you to say, because I feel new. Because I just feel like something is different. It's good that you feel good, that you feel new. But your salvation is not based off of how you feel. It's based off of what you believe according to the Bible, the Word of God. The Bible declares, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. So that, then it says the mouth with the mouth confession is made unto your salvation. When you confessed him as Lord and Savior, he became Lord and Savior. He gave you a brand new spirit. Watch this. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God in its basic definition. So when you just got born again, you were already made right with God. All of your sins have been forgiven. They've been washed away, wiped away. That's why we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. It's because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Watch this. That we are children of the most, we can be children of the most high God as we accept Jesus as our savior. You just did that today. You are part of the family of God. You have eternal life. You are born again. And then when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive, watch this, this is the third person of the Godhead. The Bible talks about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. These three are one. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth. He came in the book of Acts chapter two, what's called the day of Pentecost. It was 50 days after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, after the resurrection of Christ, when his Holy Spirit came and invaded the earth. And he's still with us in the earth today to help us as the church, the body of Christ to assist us. You are born again. Watch this. That born again experience gave you authority. The Holy Spirit in filling gave you power. So you have authority, rights and privileges, but you also got great ability now to enforce what you have rights to. The greater one abides in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. You're born again. I don't know about you. I'm not, I ain't tooting my own horn. I was like, that, that's the Holy Ghost. That's just good teaching, Holy Spirit. He wants to give you understanding of what just happened and to kind of give you a snapshot of what's taking place. I need to write a book on this. Just a mini book just to help you. Once you know that you're born again, this is what's happened. Now, from here on out, you need to develop your spirit and renew your mind to the Word of God. Begin to change how you think by now hearing, seeing, reading what God says, getting understanding of what he means by that. This is how you renew your mind. So it's getting the understanding, changing how you think, but the application of it as well. It helps to enforce it and now change your character, new character, okay? Which is born out of ha new habits, which is born out of new actions, which is born out of new decisions, which is born out of a new way of thinking, okay? So now I want you just to understand, I want you to begin to just grow. We want to help you grow. If that's you, and God is calling you, watch this, I'm giving you this third invitation to join this ministry, to become a member of this ministry. God says, listen, get to the place God called you to be. There he will sustain you. 
Some may have not made a decision yet. God says, make the decision. You make the decision, he'll bring the provision. God told Elijah, that's good, Lord. Get to a certain place and there will I sustain you. And sometimes what happens is, well, I don't know if I want to connect here because of X, Y, Z, or because this is not there, that's not there. But sometimes you'll be amazed if you just connect, the provision will come. And you might be the provision. Obey the Spirit of God. Make the decision now. Get connected to a local church. It's important to have a pastor, to have pastors. God says, after our own, my own heart, who will feed you the word of God. We're called to oversee your souls. We don't take that light. We want to welcome you, number one, to the body of Christ. But for those that also desire, we want to welcome you to the spirit of our fellowship. Amen. We're on the go and on the grow. Praise God. If that's you, we want you to connect with us. Let us know what happened. There's information coming up on your screen, how to connect with us. There's an email, you can send us a message. You can message us on our social media platforms and let us know, hey, I got born again. How can I learn more about this Christian life? We'll have somebody connect with you from our connect team to be a blessing to you, to help you. We wanna help you walk through this process. God has dealt with me about digital discipleship this year. And so there's some, some recordings I'm gonna be doing, some things that just provide content, whether it's through social media, just different areas, different platforms to help you just grow and develop in different areas. <clears throat> I wanna help you, especially in those, and my concentration is gonna be in those six areas I'm talking about. He has already given me parameters. He's already showing me and shown me, okay, these areas. So give them something all the time on these areas. And the more you do, the more you apply, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to succeed. Amen. Well, I love you guys so much. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. There's some information coming up on your screen. This is to help support the vision that God has called us to do and to be a blessing to those around us. And so we just thank God for your continued financial support. We could not do what we do without the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers, the supporters, the members and partners and supporters of this ministry. And we thank God for you. Also, for those as we're that information is coming up on your screen um, of different ways you can give. You can scan the QR code. It'll take you to a secure page on our website where you can sow. Uh, we don't sell your information to third parties, anything like that. And so we want to make sure that we're good stewards over what God has entrusted us. And through those um, tithes, offerings and gifts of love and support for the work of the ministry. Amen. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, um, We'll be announcing, we're um, scheduling and getting everything straight for our new members classes. For those that desire to be a part, we're gonna get times and, and things available for those that wanna become a part and be in those classes to do that. And I will be revving up and kicking out again, the discipleship development. Um, we did it during COVID. We had great success with it. Uh, we went through different topics and subjects um, from salvation to the Holy, Holy Spirit baptism, prayer, giving, um, serving, it's just so many different things that we talked about. And I wanna still uh, provide that material for you. So I'll be hard at work getting that stuff done. We're gonna get it out to you to help develop you and train you in the things of God and the word of God, amen. All right, y'all, huh? Also, we are still believing for our uh, truck. Our, um, it's our, our box trucks that we can do mobile ministry and things of that nature right now. Um, while we're still believing for uh, a facility that um, is sufficient for our ministry and for everything we need, uh, we're currently mobile worshiping in a community center every first and third Sunday. Um, we will be sending out an announcement for next month, um, even with Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, we call it Resurrection Sunday, where we um, we will be in person um, for that. We want to make sure, well, before I then make sure, well, we'll make sure we get everything straight before I make the final announcement. Um, for that particular Sunday. Um, so we, um, with the truck, this truck will be for ministry purposes, to supply, to move equipment, or to, to do outreaches, uh, different things, whether it's food supply, whether it's, you know, for our setup breakdown, for ministry, things of that nature. And so we're believing, and all I really received at the time was just believe for it. Um, I wasn't given an instruction to request money for it, or to, for people to sow towards it just yet. Until I get that release, I'm just saying, we're gonna just believe God for it together, okay? So all I'm asking you to do right now 
is just stretch your hand towards the screen. And I want you to, to, to declare and decree, say in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new ministry truck paid for in Jesus name. Amen. That's it. That's it. And we thank you for it now, Father. We give you praise for it. We give you glory for it. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. All right, y'all. Um, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. And so I pray that you got something out of this today. I pray that you received well. I want you to muse on it, think about it, meditate on it. Just, just get it in your psyche. Listen, God wants to expand. He wants to increase our capacity for greater. And the way he does that first is by increasing our thinking. We, we go in there head first. Our spirit is already there. Our spirit already has received these things. But now our mindset needs to get to a place that we begin to now function and maneuver in principles that produce power. Praise God. Well, at this time, I declare and decree great favor on you and your families, your household. I declare everything you touch is blessed, grows and increases, that you're fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion over every area of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.